So this is a summary for Jeroboam's syndrome or cornerstone lesson number seven for February 17th, 2024. The story of Jeroboam would be considered a classic case study of what happens when someone refuses to follow God's leading. Now, let's take the term or the phrase classic case study and look at that. Now, what's a case study? Case study is an example that is used uh, like at law school or it's used at universities to, to show students what it is to examine in detail what it is that should be done or shouldn't be done in a particular situation okay so they're training doctors and they want to show you how you know a certain procedure is supposed to be done they can you know use a case study and say hey in this situation this is why the patient was treated in this particular way because these were the signs that were presented and the treatment suggested this and so on law school same thing right so this case study is for us to pull from it uh, certain lessons right and it says that this case study shows what happens when someone refuses to follow God's leading now if we refuse to follow God's leading then what comes next is sin it says through the prophet Ahijah God called Jeroboam to be king of the ten tribes of Israel. Watch this. He didn't take it upon himself. God was the one who called him. Right? So even though we are called by God, we have been given God's mandate. It doesn't mean that the calling in itself qualifies us and makes us pure or makes us clean. Right? We have to actually do the work of submitting ourselves and submitting to the will of God to, to actually, you know, make progress in that regard. Rather than trusting God, however, Jeroboam felt compelled to take matters into his own hands. Abraham did it. When he got that promise that, you know, your son would be, you know, the one that would be like the, the stars of the of heaven and his offspring like the stars of heaven he went ahead and said boy following the wife's lead let me take hagar and i'll get a son that way and god had to come back to him and say no 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 a so your son you sarah you are sarah's son not talking about any other one right he took it upon himself and and people say today that the conflict that we see in the middle east is stemming from the conflict between those two the son of uh, you know sarah and the son of hagar ishmael and isaac to this day right what would it have been like in the middle east if abraham did not take matters into his own hands maybe thousands millions would not have died because of that so let us put the problems into the hands of Jesus, right? Ellen White puts it this way, Jeroboam's greatest fear was that at some future time, the heart of his subjects, his subjects, you know, he should have been God's subjects, his subjects might be won over by the ruler occupying the throne of David. He reasoned that if the ten tribes should be permitted to visit often the ancient seat of Jewish monarchy, where the services of the temple were still conducted as in the years of Solomon's reign, many might feel inclined to renew their allegiance to the government centering at Jerusalem. This prompted, this prompted Jeroboam to establish centers of idol worship at Bethel and Dan. This spiritually derailed Israel and led them down a path that resulted in the greatest pain and destruction they could experience. Such is the inevitable story of sin. Disobedience and compromise will always yield unwanted consequences. 
me say that again disobedience and compromise will always yield unwanted consequences the bible warns you may be sure your sin will find you out numbers 32 verse 23 sin would have few takers if the destructive consequences came immediately let's say that again sin would have few takers if the destructive consequences came immediately if it is that you saw your friend doing something him take a puff of weed and immediately him drop down boof and that was the end of him if it is someone engaged in a sinful act and death was the instant result a lot of us would stay clear of certain activities because we know what the consequence is instead as we see with the story of jeroboam sin woos and 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 calls us before it rapes us of joy and life right so it woos us and it cuddles us and you know it whispers all these promises in our ears and then it rapes us of joy and life fortunately no sin is beyond the boundary of god's grace while we cannot escape the unsavory consequences of uh, sinful choices please get this part enough you still have the, the consequences of the choices to deal with we can rejoice in the infinite uh, mercy of jesus so it was with david so it was with david he was forgiven but the consequences of his sin was seen in his household so we had the adonijah the absalom the, the rape of tamar all of those things those he had to deal with even though he was forgiven right um because of the cross we can be absolutely secure in our salvation the lord did not give up on israel without first doing all all that could be done to lead them back to their allegiance to him god is no more inclined to abandon his relentless pursuit of every person still today every person today so he really wants to you know to save us uh john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that you know whosoever you know whosoever will may have eternal life so for this lesson um, they want us to learn about the inevitable brokenness that comes from sin to sense the unwillingness of god to give up on on his children and to understand that forgiveness from sin comes from calvary so we have uh, a link to our fundamental beliefs and that would be belief number 10 right um the belief in the infinite love and mercy of god that he made christ who knew no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might be made the righteousness of god led by the spirit the holy spirit we sense right our need and acknowledge our sinfulness and repent of our transgressions and exercise faith in jesus as a savior and lord we need to understand that he's our substitute and our example hmm? thus saving faith comes through divine power and the word and is the gift of god's grace uh, through christ we are justified and adopted as his sons and daughters there's a a little story uh, a little illustration that we can use as we look at this whole concept of sin listen to this one there's a 13 foot snake which was the embodiment of evil 13 foot snake right now this snake is in a in a zoo okay he had a scar over his left eye which prevented healthy shedding you know that snakes have to shed their skin consequently at least two times 
a year, zookeepers would get the dreaded phone call from the, the manager in the reptile house. The cobra shed his skin last week, but his eye cap didn't come off. According to one zookeeper, the task of helping the snake shed its skin requires a team of five people. Three animal keepers, the curator, and a vet. The cobra slithered toward the team, spread its cape, and lifted up itself to full stature. You know how they look like they're standing up? The curator grasps it behind the venom glands. One of the keepers was asked to wad paper towels and stuff them into the cobra's mouth. The cobra then bit on it until uh, yellow, it was yellow and dripping with venom. So it's squeezing the venom into, into the paper. Now think about this, that full grown elephants can die from a king cobra's bite. So you know that a, a, a human could not survive that, right? The trickiest part of any snake handling procedure is the release. Let's go with it again. The trickiest part is the release. More people are bitten while trying to let go of the snake rather than grabbing and handling them. For you see, when it comes to snakes, it's easier to grab but harder to let go of. Now the big question is, do we have any snakes in our lives? We, it was easy to grab on to certain things, but difficult to let go of them. Think about our addictions. Easy to become an alcoholic, very difficult to let go. We, found, we find ourselves trapped in, in the poisonous jaws of, of these things. Easy to grab hold of pornography. Easy to grab hold of bad habits such as envy, lying, lust, deceit right easy to to find uh, access to immoral movies on the web and all all these things before you know it we can't let go of them those who cheat on on a chemistry exam today then fudge their time card at work and in short order they are entangled by a snake of compromise that will destroy their character all of the habits that we form that are negative they are difficult to break. The, the suggestion is, spare yourself the brutal task of breaking potentially fatal habits by, staring, by staying clear of these snakes. It's not just fun to get bit. Right? You have to stay clear of those. So we can, we can wrap up the lesson by saying this. The story of Jeroboam is a treasure, a treasure that teaches us that great lives can be destroyed by small decisions. So don't, don't just think that is the big things that you do, right? Those little things you do on a daily basis can have an impact on your life, right? The little lies we tell, hmm? the little corners we cut, we are reminded in the story that God will not be mocked when he says that we will uh, that he will allow no other gods beside him God means business to choose otherwise is to put your soul in peril the story of the prophet from Judah underscores this point that God is serious about our full devotion remember the prophet who went there he was told uh, if you walk one way, don't walk that way, come back out, you mustn't eat or drink. He met another prophet and the prophet said to him, listen, God tell me if he tell you, say you can come back to my house and eat. And he did so. And the first prophet who told the, the, the prophet was then given the message to tell him that because you turned away from what God told you to do, you will not be buried in the house of your ancestors. That story. All right, good. So it shows that God wants our full devotion to follow any other voice than God's is to invite what? Hardship, 
and heartache. So if we don't do what God says, we are going to experience hardship and heartache. God has our best interests at heart. And we can fully trust him. Sin destroys. However, obedience to God results in life. Abundant life. And the invitation is yours to take up. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve.